In this video, we're going to add a graphic to our t-shirt and we're going to make it look as realistic as possible, trying to go with all the folds and highlights of the t-shirt. Let's get started. To get started, I'm going to open up my model image inside of Photoshop. So let's open this in Photoshop. Now, all the assets that I'm using, also the graphic that I'm going to put on the shirt, are going to be included in the description in this tutorial. This image I downloaded from Unsplash, which is a website where you can download free images for commercial use. And the vector file that I'll be using to put on the t-shirt, I downloaded from a website that's called FreePick. So let's get a bit closer to this image using Commander Control Plus. And the first thing I want to do is eliminate the Nike logo over here. So I'm just going to select this using the marquee tool, the rectangle marquee tool. And I'm going to select the Nike logo. And now I'm going to jump into Edit content aware fill now this feature is introduced in the latest version of a photoshop and you can see what it does it automatically fills in the nike t-shirt with the texture from the t-shirt so right now we don't have the logo anymore so i'm just going to click ok to accept the changes just make sure to notice that what it does it creates a duplicate and adds the fill the content aware fill in a duplicate so so let's just merge these two together by selecting both of them and right clicking merge layers now we can deselect our selection by command or control d perfect so the next thing is preparing our vector graphic to put on our t-shirt to do that i'm going to open my vector graphic inside of illustrator so double click on the folder, right click on the EPS file and open with Adobe Illustrator. Here is our file. Now you can see there are two versions of this graphic, which is pretty awesome. The first one is for white backgrounds and the second one is for dark back backgrounds. So since our uh, t-shirt is a dark background, I'm going to use the right one. So let's delete the left one and let's delete the background from the black one and you can see over here it looks pretty good the only thing I'm concerned about is the dark areas over here which I do want to make them transparent just so they will show off the t-shirt color instead of a strange color that won't be exactly like the t-shirt so I want it to blend in better so I need to delete all the dark parts to do that I'm going to select my whole vector file inside of the pathfinder window i'm going to select divide it has an option for divide if you don't see the pathfinder you can open it always from the windows uh, menu so great we've divided our shape i'm going to right click and ungroup and i'm going to select a dark element from my vector file so you need just to select one of these jump into select and choose same fill color that will select all the places that have the exact hex color that you selected originally so right now on the keyboard i'm just going to hit delete and that will delete all the dark places and now we'll have a nice transparency between the vector file and the um, t-shirt mock-up so I'm just gonna select everything over here command or control C to copy jump back in to Photoshop and I'm going to paste this inside you can just paste that as a smart object and click OK and now I can make it a little bit larger if your image distorts what you can do to stop it from distorting is hit the shift key and just make that larger until it looks realistic you can see that this t-shirt has a bit of an angle to it a bit of a slant so wait until you see the double arrow in the corner while you're transforming your vector image 
and just turn that a little bit to the side until it has a nice angle that represents the same angle as the t-shirt. You don't want too much, try to be exact and hit enter to accept your changes. Great, so right now we have a nice layout over here and what we want to do is to blend in our vector file with the t-shirt. I'm going to hide the vector file and right now what we're going to do is create a displacement image map. To do that, we're going to select the t-shirt. So I'm going to select it with using the quick selection tool. If it's not already selection, you can long click over here and move to the quick selection tool. You can play around with the square brackets to make your brush bigger or smaller. So let's just go for a big size over here and I'm just gonna hit start hitting oh we need to be selected on the background so I'm just gonna select the background and now you can go over your t-shirt and now you can go over the t-shirt and just start selecting all the parts of it now you can see it also selected the pants over here because uh, they're about the same color you can deselect that by making your brush smaller with the brackets the square brackets and hitting alt that changes the plus to a minus and now we're starting to deselect parts great you don't have to be exact what's important is that the middle part is selected and the next thing we're going to do is uh, create a duplicate from the background so let's right click duplicate layer and hit ok over here while we have the t-shirt selected, I'm going to create it into a mask. So just hit the quick add layer mask button in the layers pane. And let's hide the background. So we can see that only the t-shirt is selected right now. I'm going to push up the contrast over here inside of the t-shirt. So to do that, I'm going to add in a adjustments layer over here, also a quick option to do that is in the layers pane and I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer I want to clip it to my t-shirt so I'm going to right click create clipping mask just so you can see the small arrow over here so it will affect only this exact layer and in the levels pane I'm just gonna push up this right gauge so I have a better contrast in my image so if we want to see a before and after can see this is how it was before and then I added the uh, levels and played with it and now you can see there's a better contrast between the highlights and the shadows so great we're going to save this as a PSD file so file save as and I'm going to save this on my desktop as a displacement it doesn't really matter how you call it but I'm just gonna call it displacement so it makes sense for you guys and now we can hide these parts of the displacement map bring back our model and our vector file now we don't want to work on the displacement map so we're going to save this again so file file save as and I'm gonna call it mockup great so we have everything saved we have also our mock-up with our model and vector file and also the displacement map and now we're going to use the displacement map to create sort of curves in our vector file so it looks just more realistic upon our model so to do that you need the, to select the vector layer in your layers pane jump into filter distort and over here we're going to select displace over here in the displace panel we don't need to change anything so just make sure you have the same setting as me 10 10 stretch to fit repeat edge pixels and embed file data in smart object it, this should be the default I mean you don't need to change anything and hit OK over here we're going to select the displacement map you see over here it's the t-shirt that uh, we took off all the details and we pushed up the contrast using the levels so I'm gonna hit open and what this does it just makes small little curves 
over here you can really see it good wherever there's a highlight it pushes up the uh, vector and wherever there's a shadow it pushes it down exactly like it shows on the t-shirt so the next step is going to be to try to make this even better to make it even better we're just going to right click on our vector and hit blending options in the blending options you don't want to turn any of these on you want to be in the general section and down here we have an option for blend if gray which is exactly what we want we want to blend it if it's gray and we don't want to affect this layer but we do want to affect the underlying layer now over here there's a gauge that if I start moving it you can see it's sort of distorting everything so I'm just gonna push that back and what we want to do we want to split this gauge into two using the alt key on our keyboard and now you can see how that splits that into two and now it will start curving our graphic even more I mean it's starting to hide the shadows and showing off our highlights even more and you can really really see how good this looks over here you can see the details and over here how realistically the vector file is curving on our t-shirt folds great let's zoom out a little bit command or control minus and over here i'm just gonna push up down the opacity from 100 percent to 80 percent just to make that look even more realistic awesome so i think that's about it i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel and I'm going to see you in the next video.